Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning. Our opening song is number 502 in these uh, Breaking Bread books from last year. You can do it in English or Spanish, whatever you're most comfortable in. I know English. What happened there? <clears throat> Lord, you have come to the seashore, neither searching for the rich nor the wise, Desiring only that I should follow. O Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. All I long for. I have found by the water at your side I will seek other shore. I want to welcome everyone as we celebrate this Eucharist here on the uh, Tuesday of the 18th week of Ordinary Time. And so those who are here present in the National Shrine and those who are joining us virtually. So let's for a moment presence ourselves amid the presence that is always present deep within us and all around us. Let go of anything that takes our mind or our heart away from where our feet are in this assembly of God's people. For the Lord has gathered us together to praise him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And as we, as we uh, celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's for a moment reflect on the ways we don't live up to what our faith proclaims. That somehow that Jesus is present, especially in the turbulent times when our life becomes ungrounded. And we don't trust that Jesus is there to really help us or things just go different or we listen to false prophets that don't want us to believe the truth of our faith. And we ask the Lord for the embrace of divine mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sin and bring us unto life everlasting. Let us pray. O Lord, draw near to your servants and answer our prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. And we ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as our one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses on the pretext of the marriage he had contracted with a Cushite woman. They complained. Is it through Moses alone that the Lord speaks? Does he not speak through us also? <laughs> and the Lord heard this. Now, Moses himself was by far the meekest man on the face of the earth. So at once, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the meeting tent. And the three of them went out. 
Then the Lord came down in the column of cloud and standing at the entrance of the tent called Aaron and Miriam. When both came forward, he said, Now listen to the words of the Lord. Should there be a prophet among you, in visions will I receive, reveal myself to him. In dreams will I speak to him. Not so with my servant Moses. Throughout my house, he bears my trust. Face to face, I speak to him, plainly and not in riddles. The presence of the Lord he beholds. Why then did you not fear to speak against my servant Moses? So angry was the Lord against them that when he departed and the cloud withdrew from the tent, there was Miriam, a snow-white leper. When Aaron turned and saw her a leper, he said to Moses, Ah, my Lord, please do not charge us with the sin that we have foolishly committed. Let her not thus be like a stillborn babe that comes forth from its mother's womb with its flesh half consumed. Then Moses cried to the Lord, Please, not this. Pray, heal her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against only you have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. that you may be justified in your sentence, vindicated when you condemn. Indeed, in guilt was I born, and in sin my mother conceived me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not off from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. And after doing so, Jesus went up in the mountain by himself to pray. Now when it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by waves, for the wind was against it. And during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came toward them walking on the sea. Now when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. And at once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. But Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. 
and said to him, O you of little faith, why do you, did you doubt? And then after they got into the boat, the wind died down. And those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Now after making the crossing, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men at that place recognized him, they sent word to all the surrounding country. And people brought to him all those who were sick and begged him that he might touch only the tassel of his cloak. And as many as touched were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's interesting readings, because in the first reading, as we continue through the books of uh, the first five books of the Bible, we're in the book of Numbers today, which is usually a boring book, but it's a lot of history. You get this issue of the kind of um, when the people of Israel get tired of Moses. They've been going too long. The last few days you heard them, they're finally suddenly romanticizing Egypt, their slavery and, and poverty in Egypt. And suddenly, well, at least we have this and this. And this. And now it's here they're going after Moses, thinking, he misled us, he took us out here to die. You know, how, you remember how you trust people and you have expectations, but then when it isn't fulfilled, you go after, you attack them sometimes. Or don't give them time to fulfill what they're doing. And so suddenly they decide, and then one of Miriam, of course, is the Moses', Moses sister, and she was his companion in some ways, but suddenly they go after him. This isn't working right, because it isn't what they wanted this long journey and the struggles and the trials, despite all the way in which food showed up and water showed up and everything God did. But it was a different journey until we, until we get to somewhere we're not even sure it is. And that's important. So, uh, so they kind of start complaining at you to the Lord and say, is it Moses alone that speaks? You know, that, what will we speak to? You know, sometimes we all think what everything we think is God speaking to us, don't we? We like to deify our own thoughts, our own fears, our own conspiracy theories, our own uh, insecurities and stuff. And so it's there. And so and he says, now Moses is meek. And so suddenly the Lord intervenes and says, wake up, you two. I do talk to Moses. I am the one in communion with him. You know, some people have that insight. Uh, some people are deluded to think they have that insight. You know, Hitler thought he had a divine mandate, remember, to purify the human race. So you've always got to discern what that's about, and that's what the problem they were having. And he's saying, no, and he said, look, I'm the one who speaks to him. Listen to him. So I think the question today is, who are the prophets we listen to? Prophets speak truth. They don't speak future. They speak truth. Who are the people that call us to reality? Who are the people who delude us? You know, we all have these false prophets that take us on fantasy trips or trips of, disillu of disillusionment and division, you know, that aren't gospel-based and aren't the word of God, even though they think they are. And we sometimes deify them as almost if they're messianic. And I think we have to look at that. And then he said, you know, and of course, there's that interesting part of the story. It looks like it, after the, this vision they have of, Mo of, of God with, with Moses and him uh, in her, that she seems to be a leper. She's kind of ostracized in that story, you know, somehow. And I think we have to be careful of that. Who do we follow? Who, who's leading us into a sense of what's true, what God has said? Because we're, we live in a world right now that truth got mixed up. Truth has to be what I want it to be. Do you ever have people look at you or sometimes say, I know why you did that, you know, something you didn't like? I know why you did that. Well, I know what I did, but I didn't do it for that reason. You know how they think they can read your mind and heart? And, and it's interesting. And, and, we, and we follow certain people sometimes that divide us and don't speak to the kingdom of the dignity of all human beings, not just the dignity of those who are Catholic or special or whatever we think our tribal group is all about. So I think we have to look at that. Who are the prophets we listen to today? Especially in a world that's so divided as ours is. And, you know, the interesting piece is before you used to see it occasionally. Now, 24 hours on, on news and, and it's all over the social media and, and things that are totally wrong. You know, we know that are and are just scientifically wrong. Just because people don't like it, they, they badmouth it and stuff. You can see it with the vaccine sometime going on. You know, people making fun of it as their friends and wives and husbands are dying of it. It's not true because I don't want it to be true. 
Do we define truth as what I want, not what is? And I think that's always the issue. So a prophet's always going to get us deeper. In a religious thing, it's always going to be someone who reminds us not that we're distanced from God or sinners before God or unworthy before God, that we are God's beloved daughters and sons with the responsibility and the glory that comes from that. And then you get this Jesus issue. And I think the other part of it is this wonderful story. Uh, some of you have been on the Sea of Galilee. It always looks so peaceful until those storms come up. But Jesus there, he's, he's fed the crowd. He's been teaching them. He says, get in the boat and go over there and I'll meet you on the other side. And he goes to be alone. Jesus always needs to be alone to listen. Father, what's going on here? What's going on? You know, because he's trying to get in touch with his own message and his identity in his human heart and mind. So they go off the thing, and of course the storm comes up, and they're all scared, and they're, you know, where, where is he when we need him, and blah, blah, blah. We all say that sometimes. When life is more, where are you, God? And suddenly he comes walking on the water. And they're, they're, oh, it's a ghost. It has to be a ghost. What is this, you know? And then G Peter does that wonderful thing, and Jesus, it's a ghost. And then Jesus said, take courage. Don't be afraid. It's me. Really? You know, he had been on a roller coaster with some of them. And then Peter said, if it's you, command that I come to you on the water. Great story. And Jesus said, come on. It's a great story. Because then he gets out of the boat. He steps into the water. And it's all okay. Jesus can always be the bridge over troubled waters or the things that can help us get through. But then what happens? And you read the story quickly. He's kind of looking at Jesus, and he's somehow walking there. And then it says, he looked his eyes off, and he saw how strong the wind was, and he saw the turbulence, and suddenly he looked at the turbulence, and the waves, and the storm, and <gasps> I'm sinking, help! Jesus said, stretch out your hand, come on. I think a lot of us amid the time when our lives become on troubled waters, or things don't go right, or we come ungrounded by a lot of things. You know, we kind of panic and say, where were you? Where are you? Why did you leave me? See, Peter made the mistake, instead of keeping his eyes on Jesus, who's looking, say, it's me, it's really me. Do we keep our eyes on him, or do we look at everything around us? Look what's going wrong. Look at the turbulence I'm living with. And you sink in it, and you sink in it. And he says, oh, you have little faith. So I think our faith, as we gather here today on this early in, in, in August, is how much does our faith help us to trust that God is there amid the turbulent times? And the prophets can speak to the truth of our faith, that God is always present in everything and everyone. He's not only present in his word, he's present in his body and blood, he's present in us as his people. And he's present in all the people and experiences we're going to have this day. And somehow to trust that. And trust that experience of God. It's hard. Because we have certain limited expectations of where God is and what God will do and where God will show up. And that's exactly what Miriam and, um, what's his name? Uh, and Aaron, the priest, was doing. And so I think, look at it today, as we gather through this day, as we hear it in the middle of it, uh, celebrating Eucharist, is where do we see God in the midst of the troubled times? And who are the people we listen to that point to that presence? And who tell, who tell us to deny it, to get caught in the turbulence, the storms, the conspiracy theories, the denials that somehow divide us, rather than unite us in this Christ, that we eat and drink and listen to and follow. Jesus promised that whenever we gather together in faith, Abba, our Father, will listen to us, and so let us pray. Let's first of all pray for peace in our world and wherever people suffer from the violence, the injustice, and historic misunderstanding of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's gather together in our hearts and pray for those people who need the healing power of the Lord Jesus, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, or relationally. For them, let us pray to the Lord. 
I'd like to pray for all the members of the Little Flower Society and for all people who support the life and the ministries of the Carmelites here and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for the gift of discernment that we know who to listen to, who can guide us along the way that really makes God's kingdom possible here in this world. With unity, peace, and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for ourselves that in the dark and the turbulent times of life, that we trust that Jesus is there stretching out his hand to help us, instead of simply becoming preoccupied and obsessed with the troubles and the darkness and the disillusionment of our world. Let us pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us pray for our own private and personal intentions. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and faithful God, thank you for always listening to us. And we ask you to continue to manifest your presence in our life by responding to the needs that we place here before you and those that lie unspoken and even unknown in the sounds of our hearts. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. And through the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, fruit of the earth and vine and work of human hands, they will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And my sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Holy One, our God. O oh Lord, graciously sanctify these gifts and accepting the offering of the spiritual sacrifice, make us an eternal offering to you. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we remember and give thanks that at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, that Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And we remember and give thanks that in that same way that before that supper was ended, that Jesus took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and the entire people that you claim as your own. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her blessed hut, her blessed husband, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Therese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For we join in this sacrifice of Jesus because we know, we believe, and we proclaim through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And inspired by divine teaching, let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Lord, deliver us from all evil and from all fear, from whatever prevents us from knowing you and from loving one another. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your peace, so that you, we, you, we can live all of our days joyfully awaiting and experiencing the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are your. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here. And grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin, darkness, and division of our world. And blessed are we who are called to this banquet of the Lamb.
body of Christ. The 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 body of the body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, accompany with your constant protection those you renew with these heavenly gifts. And in your never-failing care for us, help, help us make us worthy of eternal redemption. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all days of your life. And let's uh, pray to Mary, our sister in faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the end. This Mass is ended. Let's go forth in peace and glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives. Uh, there is a donation basket there if you can help with the maintenance of this shrine. Okay, Our cl let's go. F I said that. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Finish with a uh, number uh, five hundred two. We'll do verses two and four. Lord, see my goods, my possessions. In my boat you find no power, no wealth. Will you accept then my nets and labor? O Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. All I long for, I have found by the water. 
at your side. I will be gathered. Verse 4. Lord, as I drift on the waters, be the resting place of my restless heart, my life's companion. Thank you. O oh Lord, thank you. With your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. All I long for, I have found by the water. At your side, I will be gathered sure. 